Good evening, good evening everyone. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you today. Very, very glad to have you. My name is Jonan Kanwanoha and I'm the team leader at Jonaki Holdings Limited. And at Jonaki Holdings Limited, we offer credit. We offer financial relief. So you can always come if you need money, you have a consignment you want to clear, you have a car you want to clear, you drive that car, we top it up for you and import it for you. Also, if you have a business you want to scale up or want to finance, we are just a call away. You can always check us out www.jonakiholdings.com. So I always look forward to having you around. And also note that uh, you can always check out my YouTube channel for the videos that you've missed, for the live stream that you've missed, where I majorly talk about money lending, but also I talk about other disciplines of business. So it speaks to several business leaders. So if you're stuck or you want to learn one or two things but above all implement check out my youtube channel at john and can now then you get to learn one or two things and then i'll be happy especially if you implement because if you learn and you don't implement your learning is in vain and if you learn and you don't support someone because that's why i endeavor to come here because i know that someone is supported someone is uplifted I received testimonies during COVID. Someone told me because of your video is why I kept in business and that keeps me going. So go out there as you learn these things, go teach, go support, go coach, go, you know, go help someone, go give a hand. Then we shall be happy, all of us together. You know, there's huge room for growth. There's huge room for growth. There's big, big room for growth than even thinking about competition. So with that, I'd like to introduce our today's topic. Uh, being relational rather than transactional in money lending. You are meant to be relational rather than transactional. And you see, I concentrate on money lending, but it also applies to several other disciplines. Because you want to create a relation rather than just looking at uh, the my daily bread. Most of the business people look at that very transaction they are conducting right now. Looking at the cut they are making right now. Not knowing that there is much more that lies ahead than actually what lies right now. That lies at the deal you're closing right now. So, I want to encourage you with a few things I'm going to share with you. The Lord has put on my heart. I want to encourage you that as you're doing that transaction, ask yourself, am I being transactional or am I being relational? Am I looking at this thing for a long haul or am I looking at it for a short while? Am I being myopic? Because, you see, in looking at something... With the short-sightedness, you're being myopic. You're not seeing at what that guy can actually bring you tomorrow. You're not looking at the potential of that business and how much they can actually give you and how much they can support you five years from now, ten years from now. You see, that's why Jonathan Holdings Limited, we work with our clients. We have clients that we actually served in 2011 and they are still with us. We've worked with, with them, the journey. We've seen guys that have grown from, you know, applying for a loan of 2 million to a loan of 5 million to a loan of 10 million to a loan of 15 million to a loan of 30, 50, and now they are probably at 100, 150 million. They have literally worked with us. They have literally, we've actually held their hand. And that's what I'm talking about in our today's talk. Being relational. So you can imagine if we clash with those clients at 100,000 or at 1 million or at 2 million or at 5 million, wouldn't be having them at... at at the, at the point when they have grown to, to, to absorb a loan of 100 million, we wouldn't be having them. But it's because we had the relational touch with them. It's because we had their businesses at our hearts. It's because we are thinking about their growth rather than, you know, looking at their collaterals. It's because we are looking at a longer period of time rather than looking at that particular moment or in that particular transaction. And you see, you can imagine how much they have made from the relationship, but also how much we have also made from the relationship. We all benefit from the relationship. So it's important for the business leader, it's important for the supplier, as well as the consumer, to think relational rather than transaction. So there are few aspects that I want to share with us. There could be very many, but I picked four aspects. Why you should actually be um, relating with the client rather than transacting with the client. Because in transacting, you're, sh you're short-sighted. Yet relational, you're looking at long range and what it is that you're actually going to do with the client. So the first thing why you should think relational is to think a win-win. 
You see, it doesn't make sense if you get out of business and I'm only thriving. It doesn't make sense. If I give you a loan with the intention that you get out of business, but only me can actually benefit and keep thriving. Because who else am I going to give a loan tomorrow? Who else is going to give me a referral? Because look, I've given you money, and my intention is to constrain you to actually, I may not necessarily intend to constrain you, but probably because of the rates, probably because of the of my short-sightedness, knowingly or knowingly, I constrain you, and if I know it, you actually get out of business. So that means I do not have a client that I'm going to serve tomorrow, because before you know it, you're actually closing shop. Because you can imagine, if I usually tell this to uh, some of the guys that I mentor in money lending. So I ask them, you're lending at 20%. You're lending at 25%. If I give you this money, which business venture are you going to invest in to give you a return of 20% per month? Which business? You tell me. So until you put yourself in the shoes of the client, then you cannot know their pain points. You cannot understand their pain points. And that's why it's important that if you're thinking long range, you actually think win-win. Give at a rate that you think is affordable to the client, where the client will close that deal, where the client will service that business, where the client will service that invoice or LPO, then both of you will have a cut. That thinking win-win. You are winning, but also the client is winning. So that's the first point. Think win-win for the client. Both in terms of the rate, in terms of the rate, both in terms of affordability, both in terms of, you know, even when I'm giving you a loan and I'm doing the assessment, I am doing it for you but also for myself. I am thinking win-win. Because if I do not assess you and I just give you this money against your collateral, before I know it, I'm going to be foreclosing on that collateral. Before I know it, you're going to be losing that business. Because look, for example, if you committed your house where you sleep as a collateral, and I have not assessed you to confirm whether you actually qualify for this facility or not, before you know it, you're going to lose that collateral. And before you know it, you don't have a home. You don't have peace of mind. It means you can't actually run your business because you don't have peace of mind. Probably you have a family, you have children, and they have to be evicted. You can imagine the pain that you're going, I'm going to cause to, to you as a client, and how many clients are going to refer to me? You're going to refer to me? None of the clients, none of your friends, none of your colleagues. In any case, you're actually going to warn all your friends and your colleagues that, look, there's this guy who lends money, don't ever go to him. Don't ever go to this company. And that's why our industry has att attracted all several other names. Others call us money sharks, others call us what, whatever, whatever. But I want to tell you today, that there are some companies that are genuine. But also, there are some companies that have genuinely supported several other companies and businesses to stand, to grow, to scale up. So it's not good to generalize. And it beats back in one of the videos that I shot a while ago on the mindset. Because if the mindset that I'm approaching your transaction is to support you to grow, I'll assess you in a way that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not after failing you, I'm not after, you know, doing up best work, but also I'm um, after assessing you to qualify you to know that you can actually afford. Because ultimately what is more precious is our relationship rather than the transaction that is happening. Because we do not depend on the transactions alone. We don't depend on the daily bread alone. We depend on relationships that have been built for a while. We depend on relationships that have, have afforded to refer us to several other clients. So you as a lender, I want to ask you, as you're transacting, as you're serving that client, are you serving them with the mind of a transaction, the daily bread of that very transaction? Are you looking at the interest that you're going to make from that deal? Or you're looking at a long-term relationship, you're going to have this client. But if he's applying for two million, you're just showing off, you know, for us you don't give two million. But you see, you can actually nurture that guy to grow from two million to five million to 10 million to 30 to 50 to 100. But you might, may you, you might pride in yourself and think you're not going to serve a client of 2 million, but you do not know that the client who has come for 2 million can actually refer you to a client who can actually give you a deal of 100 million. Or even that very client can actually grow to a, to a potential client of 100 million. So I don't want you to be myopic and think that, you know, you're being too sharp, you're going too proud, you're being too, 
too high end to put a limit. It's good to put a limit, but approach it in the right way. Approach it with the right mindset. Look at it comprehensively. Because by serving that guy, you don't know whom you're serving. You don't know the potential that they have that they can actually refine. The other point I want to put, to put across is that, you know, I may not serve you, but have I educated you? Have I showed you why I've not served you? We, we, we try as much as we can at Jonaki Holdings Limited to make sure that the clients that we serve, whether we give you money or not, you're actually satisfied. That look, these guys have not given me money, but it's in the interest of myself and my business that they have not given me money. It is because they love me so much that they've not given me money. Because had they given me this money, which I do not even afford, it would have caused me problems. So you actually have to take an extra mile, you have to take an extra step to educate that client, to tell them that, look, even though we've not given you this money, this is why we've not given you this money. And this is why, this is how you can actually improve to qualify for the money. This is what you can actually do to qualify for this money. So you have to do a service to yourself as well as to the client. To serve them well. Because as I started with, you do not know how many referrals you're going to get from that client. So your intention should be to actually educate that client. In one of the blogs that I did, I told, you know, I shared with the public that much of the time when a client comes for a loan, he's on a hurry. He's in dire need for money. He wants money like yesterday. So all he's thinking about is the loan you're going to process for them. So some of them don't even read the terms and conditions. We've had scenarios, a client comes and says, you know what, I didn't actually look at that clause when I was applying for a loan. I didn't actually look, I didn't get to read about this clause. I didn't actually know that it was there. And you see, some of the lenders who have dubious intentions have actually used that as an opportunity, have banked on your pressure, on the pressure of the client, to put some clauses that tie down the client. And before you know it, the client does not even remember signing an agreement that has a particular clause. And before they know it, they are losing the collateral that they committed. Before they know it, they are taking a loan at probably 30% or 25%, and yet, in, in a nutshell, the guy just put 4%. But when we go down deep to, to read through the clauses, you find the guy is actually charging you 20%. 30%, and yet you signed for 4% or 5%. So we go an extra mile to educate you. So it is important. If you're thinking relational, it is important that you educate a client. You may lose one or two clients because you have educated them, but it's not losing. I take it as investment. It's an investment. I'm investing in these two clients to have confidence and the trust in me so they can actually refer me or even come and borrow when they very well qualify for the facility and they very well understand what it is that they're actually coming for or that they're going for. So it's an investment. It's not a loss. But if you think in transactional, you may think that because, you, because I don't want to lose the client, because I have educated them, then you actually think transactional. And before you know it, how many clients are going to serve? So I want to pose a question to you. How do you educate your clients? Do you actually go through with them the loan application process? Do you actually tell them that, you know, look, you don't qualify because of ABCD. And if you want to qualify, you need to do ABCD. There's some clients who have educated. A client comes, he has never banked. The company that is running or the business that is running does not even have a bank account. We say, look, for us, we base on your bank statement to actually give you the money. So if you're not banked, we cannot actually serve you. And then the client starts thinking about opening a bank account. We've seen clients who have interfaced with us, even when they've not got the loans because they don't have bank accounts, because we need bank statements, they actually go and open bank statements. And before you know it, because of their cash flows, you're serving them in the third or fourth month. But just because you educated them. And lost them at that point, or invested in them at that point, and before you know it, they are coming back with a ripple, a, a trickle-down effect. With a ripple effect. 
Because our business runs on trust. It's until someone can actually trust you that they can actually give you business. It's until someone can know that you have good intentions towards them that you can actually come to have confidence to come and apply for a facility. And that explains why someone can actually come for a loan that is at 8% and leaves the company that is giving at 5%, but if they are not sure, that is actually absolutely 5%, because they've also had some complaints. Someone says it's 5%, but before you know it, the guy is actually paying 15%. And yet, this guy that, or this junior key that they trust, they know that if it is 8%, it is absolutely 8%. So as a lender, I put it back to you. Have you bothered enough to educate your clients? Have you bothered enough to educate your clients? Or you're still thinking deliberate? Or you're still thinking transaction? That's why I come here to tell you that it's high time you turn around. As a matter of fact, the lending environment is getting crowded. There are many lenders. There are, there are many alternatives before the clients. So if you don't start applying some of the things that I'm sharing, then you're doomed. You're going to crash. It's a matter of when, it's not a matter of if. Why? Because these are principles. You know, principle is a principle. If you apply it, it will work for you. And if you don't apply it, and someone applies it, it will work for them, and it will not work for you. And what I am telling you is that it, I do it. It's not hearsay. I'm not just told. I actually do it, and I know what it means. And I'm being generous to other lenders and also to our clients, and also to clean up our industry. That's why I belabor. That's why I make time. That's why I commit to come and speak to you. Because I need us to clean this environment. I need us to clean this industry. I need us to serve our clients very well. There are several other clients that you actually know that I do not know about. But I want you to serve them very well. Even if I do not serve them, serve them very well. Because in a way, you'll be creating a good name for the lending industry. You'll be creating a good name. You'll be creating a good name. So that's why I belabor. So what are those points that I've told you? You need to think relational rather than transactional. You need to assess your clients very well to make sure that they qualify. It may look to be a disservice to some of the clients because some of them think that, you know what, you, you are undervaluing my property. You, I'm actually, my cash flows are, are, are very good. They can qualify for 100 million. But you tell them, look, I'm going to give you this money, but it's going to, it's going to choke you. You're, going, you're not going to, to afford it. Best in your statement, you're not going to afford it. So you're actually doing them a service by assessing them very well. By telling them, no, we cannot serve you because of ABCD. You're saving them. Because look, as we're giving out a loan on a collateral, we give 50% of the first sale value. You might find that the car that is worth 100 million, we probably can only give you probably 30 million or 40 million. So you can imagine if you knew that you cannot afford this loan and went ahead and gave you the money, before you know it, you're foreclosing on a car that is worth 100 million, but you're foreclosing it at 50 million. What a loss to the client. Yet, if I had you assessed them very well, you'd have saved them the loss of that car, and the money is there of involved. So assess them well, you're doing them a service. You're being relational rather than production. Educate them. Show them what they are meant to do. In a way, you'll be growing yourself. You'll be growing yourself. So I see our time is fast spent, but go out there and do a good service. Go out there and do a good service. In this learning industry, you actually have to build trust as much as you can. Because if you do dubious intentions, if you do dubious acts, if you do dubious transactions, if you're thinking transactional rather than relational, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you close your shop. Because word of mouth travels faster than any advert on TV or even radio, or even both combined. So word of mouth is one of the best methods that you can actually use to, to, to market your services. And how do you get word of mouth? By serving the clients that you're serving, serving them very well. Serving them as premium. Because it is us to nurture our clients from ordinary to advanced to premium, to platinum, to gold. It is us to nurture them, to nurture them. You don't target premium clients. You grow your clients to get to premium. 
and that's when business becomes sweet and that's when making money gets interesting you can imagine if we have a client that we served in 2011 now the relationship is at another level these are the clients that you can even afford to, to invite for your birthday party these are the clients that you can actually afford to invite for your wedding these are clients who have become part of family the guy can even fight for your name in your absentia they are raving fans they're no longer clients they have become part of the community part of the family of your business they are advocating for you but you see you cannot build to this level out of blue you have to be intentional it doesn't fall from heaven to you you have to be intentional you have to grow it and that's why as i conclude i encourage you attach yourself to someone who is doing a business and doing it very well who is learning and learning very well they may charge you and that's why i run masterminds sign up for masterminds i'm launching a mastermind on on uh, first june 2023 I take you through the, the learning process the details that I cannot share with you in the videos because you see some of the mistakes that we make in learning they are very costly you may think you're saving by not paying a fee that I charge for mastermind but you may lose millions of money which I lost and had I known I wouldn't have actually lost it I would have attached myself to someone because it's only then that I go to open my I, I go to have my eyes opened and I attach myself to a coach to a mentor. He charges me, yes, but there is a lot that I save by paying this small fee. Yet, I would have lost a lot of money had I not attached myself to this guy. Who is doing the business that I intend to do what I'm doing, and he's doing it very well. And this applies to all business. There is someone who is doing a business and is doing it very well. And has made, he has incurred all the costs that would have incurred. He has made all the mistakes. So you don't have to repeat the mistakes. Just learn from this guy. Learn from this guy, and you grow at a very terrific speed, and you progress, and you employ as many people, and you support as many people. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Always check us out at www.jonakiholdings.com, but also check out my YouTube channel at Jonan Kanwanaho. If you want to sign up for a mastermind, drop a comment. Someone is going to contact you, and then you can we can get roll. Um, with you in this upcoming mastermind. I run a number of masterminds in here, so this is our third cohort, so you can sign up and then we get to walk this journey together. I love you all. Have a blessed evening and enjoy uh, the rest of the weekend. See you next Friday, 5 30, same time. Don't touch the time. But above all, go and implement what you have learned. Go and implement. Go and implement. May the Lord bless you, Lord protect you, Lord guard you. Bless the works of your hands, lift up your company, grow your company, shield you from proud stars and thieves in the name of Jesus. I pray and believe. Amen. Have a blessed Friday and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.